welcome to this episode of How To Metrology. Today, in this episode, I want to talk about the Zeiss Handy Surf Plus. The Handy Surf Plus is the replacement for the older Handy Surf E35, the new model here, the E35 Plus. It comes in a nice um, lunchbox plastic case. Inside, you'll find all the components, including the unit, instruction manual, the LVT detector, charging cables, and extension cable for the drive unit. Now it also comes with a CD that helps you analyze your data if you want to take the data offline and analyze it. So the components we're going to use um, to measure parts with are going to include the surface roughness specimen that comes with your unit. This has both a calibration patch and a stylus check patch. You also have a probe. This LVDT probe has a part number on it and uh, a size. This unit is available with either a two micron or a five micron stylus. Make that decision when you purchase it. To install the stylus, you line up the three pins on the bottom with the holes inside the drive unit. Gently slide it straight in. You should never have to force it. The detector is removable if you slide it backwards. It will pop out. It attaches, it's held in place by this spring. It is also attached with this cable. If you need, there's an extension cable that comes with the kit. C and a USB port, as well as a charging port to plug your battery in. So to do these measurements, first I decided to detach the drive unit with the probe attached, put the extension cable on, that gives a little more room to work with. It also makes it easier to use this plate. This plate's kind of unique. It comes with the kit uh, and it conveniently allows you to place the drive unit and it gives you the exact height you'll need to space for small surface parts like the surface roughness patch. So the first thing to do to turn it on is we push the on button. Once the system powers up, you'll see the color display. And to operate within the color display, you have four arrow keys, a return function, and an enter button in the middle. So what's highlighted here in the top left corner is your cutoff. If I arrow to the left, if you arrow to the right, that's the evaluation length. If you arrow down, that is parameter. And to change any one of these, just simply highlight it and press the middle button. So to change the cutoff, highlight the cutoff, press enter, and it allows you with the scroll function to change the cutoff. In this example, from point one, I can go back down to point three, which is a standard. And once I'm satisfied with that, I push the enter button again, hit the return button. It goes to the previous screen. I can go over to evaluation length and change that here. I can also change parameters uh, by hitting that. I can change, you can see here, RA is the current parameter. I can highlight RQ, press the enter button. Now that's dark. RQ, RZ, and RT. Once they're each highlighted dark like this, that means they will be reported when you do a measurement. When complete, hit the return button. It takes you back to the previous screen. From there, we can arrow down to the bottom menu screens, the bottom tabs. The first one is calibrate. We'll go there next. Uh, there's also um, measurement results. When we have some measurement results, we can go back and look at what those results are. There's also internal memory. You can store your measurement results as you perform measurements with the unit. And then it extends the menu by the menu button. Selecting that brings us into system. When you choose system, this is where you'll be able to find um, your display, your units. You can change your units from inches to metric. You can set up time for sleep mode and auto power off to conserve battery power. You can continue to scroll down and set up um, various functions for export and um, exporting of information and sending information to printers. And you can change your part serial number if there's a frequency and then communication functions for the serial port. 
You can change measurement connections, analysis conditions, which would allow you to change things like peak count, notch, barrier curve, and motif for our advanced users. The second tab is measurement condition. When I select that, it shows you your calculation standard. With your calculation standards, we can change that to ISO, to ASME, to DIN, to another ISO and a JIS. We will leave ours for today's purposes at the ISO 97. You can also, in another place, change the cutoff, the land to sea. You can also here change your evaluation length. And if you're interested with evaluation length, currently it is set up at five times the cutoff. We can change that number here, highlight it and arrowing up or down. You can change it, move it up or down. You can also change the setting instead of the number of cutoff segments, you can do a fixed or a flex. When you choose flex, that allows you to go down and actually manually enter the evaluation length that you want to use. Just highlight over the number, use your up or down arrow key to select that value. Measurement speed is locked on this unit, um, but there's additional information from form removal, um, cutoff, and evaluation calculations such as Gaussian and 2C. So for advanced users, that's where you'll change your measurement conditions. Analysis conditions include peak count, notch, bearing area curve, and motif. Again, advanced user settings can be made there. The bottom right corner, are your options for your output. You can change the date, you can change your parameters, you can change how you want bearing area curve, um, measurement conditions, date and time can all be changed in these areas. Auto functions related program automatic output for the USB port and printer if needed. And then parameters just back to changing your parameters that you would like to use, um, parameter selections, judging parameters, and using 16% rules, again, advanced user information. From the main screen, you'll also see in the, near the top left corner is the position of the stylus, and it lets you know your current settings are using ISO standards. The very top right corner indicates the battery power, currently we're at three quarters. When you set up to use a surface finish tester, the first thing you should do is qualify your stylus 